All right, so time is when I say. Timer starts now. All right, oh, check infinite. Yes. Woo! All right, so I'm Fearful Ferret. I'm joined by Zach SK on the left and Zimbabwe on the right. Uh, they both played quite a bit less than me, so they'll ask questions and I'll give answers. Uh, I'm playing on easy difficulty because it's fastest. Uh, there have been some runs on 1999 mode, but they're really tough to do, and I'm pretty bad at them, so I haven't tried very often. Did you just sit there? As compared to what? Standing. Not standing. Rowing. Rowing. The first fourth of the run or so is pretty heavy on cutscenes and doesn't really have all that many sequence breaks, but it really picks up after that. We skip a ton of cutscenes and elevators and such later on. I think it's the most broken game that I play pretty much. It has like the most sequence breaks and crazy out of bounds and such, so I really enjoy running it. Excuse me. How much longer? One goes into an experiment knowing one could fail. But one does not undertake an experiment knowing one has Book or catch. Can we get back to the rowing? I suggest you do. No, not relevant yet. Are you sure? Isn't it always relevant? What? Book or catch. You should ask him. I'm not getting any uh, commentary through my headphones. Ah. Why not? Because he doesn't grow. He doesn't Interesting. grow. Interesting. Well, good thing we tested that. Uh, yeah, no joke. See what you mean. So he's you're just getting he's probably just getting game audio. We've arrived. So here's the lighthouse. It's sort of the canonical starting point for pretty much any Bioshock game, as is explained later on. Uh, the Bioshock, the original one, went down. This one goes up to the city in the clouds. It also introduces some of the themes in the game, such as DeWitt's uh, motive. He is supposed to rescue a girl and wipe away his debt. Is anyone here? Hello? It also has a talking uh, character, which is the first in the series, as you play a, a specific person whose name you know. Yep. I'm going to need a little bit of series time, because this is the most difficult puzzle in the game. We did it! Woo! Woo! Yeah. First try, too. That was impressive. You yeah, normally hit like the key I, like a third time. Yeah, I've seen a lot of runners rage quit over missing the bells because it's so embarrassing when you mace it. <laughs> $15 from Henny. Hey, Fearful Ferret, I found these silver eagles. Good luck for your run, and may the HRH gods be with you. All right. Looks like they expect me to sit in their fancy chair. Uh, can I get less game audio? That's good. So my chat calculated how many uh, G's Booker would experience during this rocket ride, and we figured out that if it has constant acceleration, he would probably barely survive. So this game is scientifically accurate. Wouldn't you be like freezing on Columbia, though, because it's like so high up in the air? Uh, I don't know about air pressure problems. There, there's quite a bit in this God. game that's hand waved. It's a game held together by quantum mechanics. Stop asking questions. <laughs> Paradise. One of the few times you'll see this city and it looks good. Otherwise, it'll be in complete chaos. Yeah, Rapture sort of starts in a dystopian state, but Columbia, at least, you get introduced to while it's still utopian and it falls down over the course of the game. Although the events that make it fall down are basically just skipped, so it sort of goes from happy to sad without any explanation in this run. And there is 
Father Comstock, the main narrative villain of this game. But he's such a great guy. So there are going to be some words that we pass by in the elevator, and they're going to look really blocky and low res and stuff. Uh, that's because I play the game on very low graphic settings. Uh, the computer here at SGDQ are actually like really good, so we could play an ultra without any problems. But the lower the graphics are, the faster the game loads in a lot of places. So as with most, most PC games, it's best played on low graphics. Uh, there are also a few frame FPS dependent uh, tricks where the higher your frame rate is, the smoother some tricks go. And very low graphics also helps with that. We have $250 from Kori. Bioshock Infinite is by far one of my favorite games of all time. So excited for this run. Here's, for, here's to hoping for the right hat first try. That's, that's an important bit. We'll, we'll get, to, we'll get that. to that later. <laughs> if you're not sure what to put for your donation comment, some variation on Booker Catch is probably a safe option. Booker Catch. So baptism is sort of a recurring theme of the game. The first time you see it is in the lighthouse where Booker sort of refuses to wash himself, but here you're sort of forced to take the baptism. Uh, Preacher Whitting likes to ramble on a bit, so you have a bit of time to just look around. Uh, this gentleman takes a particular interest in Booker, and his friend wants to join him. He wants to be baptized with you. I know I've seen this cutscene a lot, but that's because I just watch you grind out this game and you have to reset like 30 minutes in all the time. $50 from Anonymous. Go, go, ferret. First try HRH hype. Where we would love to see that 3% chance. That would be absolutely incredible. If he actually gets it, I would be actually surprised. <laughs> yeah. Uh, could I get like half as much game audio? There are a few audio cues in this game, but they're not all that important. Uh, still a bit less. That's good. All right, so we're coming up on basically the first actual speedrun strat in this game. It was fun when a good friend decided Sloth. He ran this game for about an hour and then gave up. But at least he found something, so. It skips like 10 seconds to just. Yeah, there's a platform underneath me right now that sort of comes up to my level over about 10 seconds. But there's an invisible wall uh, blocking you off from getting there. But you can actually just jump around it and land down before the platform arrives. You have to wait for a certain audio cue because the platform starts out below the death plane, and the death plane basically respawns you back up from wherever you jumped if you hit it. So you have to wait for the platform to come up above that before you can jump on it. It's one of the few places you can actually take damage before like the game starts. Yep. So here we have to wait for the parade to watch by. So in the meantime, we can do some fun things, like give this moment a seizure. She just really wants to see that parade, and you're just stopping her. You're, I don't even know. So, Farrah, what are you going to choose in the raffle? Uh, I'm thinking 11. All right. It's a good choice. There's some places where I'll be just grabbing random coins and such from trash cans. Most of the time, it's not really all that important. 
Uh, we do buy some things about two thirds of the way into the run, and that's basically the only use for Silver Eagles. But it doesn't take any time to loot containers, so I just get everything that's convenient. You mean you're not going to spend them on arcade games? Sadly, no. Disappointing. Oh, they're just telling you not to pick 77. Yep. You probably shouldn't. I, I will do my best not to pick 77. But yeah, about Silver Eagles, you might, act, you might accidentally pick up some, and that's due to Elizabeth just throwing them to you at random times. All right, so coming up here is a pretty fun skip. It was the first major skip ever found for this game. And it's nice that it comes so early. You can actually just jump on this sign and then go out of bounds. And then, and then the next area is actually over here in the skybox. It just hasn't loaded in yet. So you jump into it, and it loads around you. And you just get past the entire raffle. And then normally, this would be where people would be firing at you. But luckily, you just walk through it safely. It's just nice to stroll through. Yep. Normally, you're uh, forced to pick up the Devil's Kiss Vigor right now. But since no enemies spawn to give it to you, you don't have to. And we can actually pick it up later. And every time you pick up a Vigor in this game, there's an animation where your hands turn into fire or crows or something like that. But if you pick up a Vigor after you're supposed to have it, then that cutscene doesn't happen. You just pick it up without having to wait for that 20 seconds. So, yeah, there's, like, there's different places that along the route where you pick up like the, the relevant Vigors. And you, you'll see him pick up one in like a random house. And it's relevant because the cutscene is far less time to do it that way than to pick up the story element Vigor. Yeah, there's only one Vigor that we pick up at its intended point. Because you have to. Every time I jump on a skyhook, I wiggle the camera around a bit, and that's because the game tries to lock your camera whenever you jump on a skyhook or skyline. But by, wi by moving the camera around a bunch, it breaks that camera lock so you can more quickly uh, jump to where you want to go. All right, so here's where I actually pick up Devil's Kiss, and there's no cutscene, so now I just have it without having to wait through the animation. And up here, there's a building that the police break into, and I shoot here to make them open up the door a bit early. And I missed the headshot. I'm pretty bad at clicking heads. Boom. Since I'm playing on easy, I don't really have to worry about random damage all that much. And there are plenty of health packs along the way. Uh, in some of the fights, there's a risk of dying. But in a lot of other places, it's useful to take damage to set up death warps. Yeah. He wants to be at a low, a low health point. And there's going to be another, if he gets the item, which he will eventually, because he has a set save for it, you want to be at like almost death because of uh, the ability of the item. He's going to get it the first try. The forks have a lot of uses in this game. Angry Booker push button. Booker catch. Much obliged. So coming up here is the first, I think, mandatory fight in the game, where you have to fight a crow, which is one of the uh, more powerful enemies than just the regular grunts you come across. Uh, we use a strat where you just put down a couple fire traps in the same spot, and they stack. So enough fire traps set down will kill basically any enemy in the game. And two fire traps is enough to one-shot a crow. So I place down a couple fire traps, look away from it, so he tries to backstab me. And he just uh, teleports into it. So one of the things that I think we forgot to explain is the elixirs, which you picked up earlier. And they're, they're, whenever you pick up an elixir, you choose basically what you want to power up. And there are shield, health, and uh, salt, or like your, spe your special abilities. And you typically don't want shield because you want to be able to bust through it a lot. And you want to kill yourself or to go through like walls. So typically, the most important thing is, is uh, salts. You do pick up the other ones for other reasons. Excuse me. No need to be so rude. Skylines are pretty straightforward. You just hold W to go faster. There are some places where you can jump to spots ahead on the skyline, and it's a little bit faster than just uh, riding there yourself. So every one of those jumps might save about half a second or a second or so. Yeah, rehooking doesn't actually save too much time a lot of the a lot of the time. So and here you can jump ahead of this uh, container, and I think it pushes you forward, so you move a little bit faster. But I'm not quite sure. And there's this hotel you're supposed to run through, but you can actually just jump on the skyline and skip the whole thing. Uh, 
a couple more jumps. And we get to our first face-to-face -face introduction with uh, Comstock. This is the first time you see uh, Comstock, at least somewhat. Yep. Uh, I think we have time for some donation comments. We have $20 from Slurpee. Staying up to see the gaming god Ferret. Make quantum physics look silly. Also, shout outs to the GDQ board game crew. Games? Wish you were here, Slurpee. Fearful Ferret, the gaming god. We have $20 from Dream Spider. Bioshock Infinite is one of my favorite games of all time. Happy to see it run. Love all GDQ events because it shows how much the gaming community can come together and support a great cause. Putting this money towards the Luigi's Mansion race so I can see my favorite speedrunner, Fifi, play. Oh, and also kill the Ogres. $20 from Jill Sandwich, 139. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. Greetings from Brazil. That will, that will certainly happen. It, it will. Somewhat. Soon. That was well timed, too. It was. If you try to interact with anything while Booker's nose is bleeding, it crashes the game. Uh, in most places, you can't do that, but there's one skip much later on in the run where if you just run to the next area really slowly, then the nosebleed happens at the same time you try to flip a switch, and the game just crashes. So the solution to that is don't be slow. This is a, an interesting sequence when you, you play it to go fast. I actually didn't realize I was still on machine gun ammo. There's a backup uh, pool of ammo that you can pick up earlier, but I'll be picking up more before the next fight, so it should be fine. We only use four weapons over the course of the game, and the next one I'll be picking up is the shotgun, and after that, the volley gun and the hand cannon, as well as the RPG, but I mostly won't use that for uh, killing other people. The RPG is mostly just used to set up death warps and uh, activate whole runner set. So this is the Elizabeth Museum. I wonder why they got it locked up in this place. Elizabeth is my favorite Disney princess. Book or catch. So there's another infusion stash by back here. I'm gonna use salts. The rest of the infusions will be split between salts and health because uh, whenever you pick up a health infusion, it refills your health to full. There are some spots where it's useful to get that. Shield is just never going to happen because he needs to burn through it quickly. So Yeah, for the speed run, shield is just a downgrade. So It's possible to pick it up by accident due to the way you select the vigor because the game auto-selects health as like the place where your cursor starts. But if your mouse happens to be over one of the others, then your cursor will instead default to whatever your mouse is on. And I pick up the vigor or the infusion too quickly to actually like visually confirm what the mouse is over. So sometimes I pick up the wrong one by accident. A lot, a lot of the sequence is just uh, cutscenes from here on out. So I think if there's time for donations, this is a this is a good time. We have fifty dollars from the silenced man. Hey everyone, bring us some, the money and wipe away the cancer. Bioshock Infinite is a favorite of mine, so I find it best to donate when it's being run. Break a leg, fearful ferret. The gaming god. $20 from Anonymous. Finally get to see my favorite game being run here at SGDQ. Good luck with the run. Thank you. $15 from Real Link. Found some money. Good luck with the run, Ferret. May RN Jesus have mercy with us today. $10 from BioCurt. 
Booker, here, throws coin, throws salt, throws kitchen sink. Much obliged. She sure throws a lot at you. She does. She generally throws what you're low on, and she throws coins whenever you uh, search a lot of objects and trash cans and such, just because it's the appropriate time for you to find money, I suppose. Um, there are some, quite a few places where you have to depend on her throwing the right thing, and sometimes she'll throw ammo for the wrong weapon or something like that, or it's possible to drop a weapon, and then she throws you ammo for that weapon, so when she throws you ammo, you actually replace whatever weapon you just picked up, and that can be kind of disastrous, so you have to be careful with uh, what you accept from her. And sometimes if you're hitting the wrong button, you accidentally pick up what she's throwing at you. $50 from Ash Ashram Namifer. Hey, Fer, you probably don't know me, but I see you all the time on the Monaco leaderboards. Your godly times make me jealous. Monaco is a very good speed game. Just gaming god things. I have a man of many talents. You, you've got to go. Why? You don't want to be here when he gets here. Just a minute, I'm getting dressed. We have $50 from Nick3. Been looking forward to seeing a Bioshock Infinite run, and glad to see it finally in a GDQ lineup. Awesome stuff so far. Keep up the good work. Great work. Give it to me. Fifty dollars from a Jackster. Oblig obligatory comment about this being my first GDQ. And hype for one of my favorite games to be run. I hope you can handle those handymen better than I can. Kill those animals. I'm a ferret. Save the animals, come on. All right, so in this area, the ground shakes periodically as Songbird uh, rams into the tower. It happens at consistent times, and if you jump right before Songbird hits the tower, uh, you won't get any slowdown. So I use, a you even be faster set of, I use a set of audio and visual cues to know uh, when the right time to jump is. It's still pretty hard to get because the game doesn't explicitly tell you when it's coming. Those are pretty good jumps. There's one last one here. Fortunately, I managed not to get around this corner, so... Okay, there we go. Yeah, you can, you can go faster than Elizabeth, which you're not supposed to be able to... There's two times where, basically, you're chasing with Elizabeth, and you shouldn't be faster than her. This is one of those two times. We have $50 from Hans Olo. Would you kindly accept this donation? What am I? You're the girl who's getting out of this tower. Ferret, what is science done? I actually pushed Elizabeth out from where she's supposed to be. So she's supposed to be pushing up against the wall right here, but she's just sort of out in the middle of nowhere. And that right there is a one time an elevator is actually useful in this game. We have fifteen dollars from Anonymous. Good luck on, good luck on making sub one fifty, Ferret. Vote bird and don't forget the giant balloons. We'll get to that too. Yes. It's coming up. So most of the run up until this point is very consistent. All the glitches are relatively easy to pull off, and there's not all that many fights or anything that can put things out of whack. So the next area is when things really get heated from a competitive standpoint, because there's a lot of RNG in the next area, and there's a lot of glitches after that, which take a lot of execution. So everything up till now is basically just warm up. And now the real run begins. We got another couple minutes of this cutscene though for now. Fifty dollars from one booth. Have to donate for a good cause and an awesome event. Keep up the great work, runners and staff. Much love. Fifty dollars from Airy. I've been trying to tune in as much as I can due to time zones. But what I have seen has been incredible. All of the runners have my utmost respect. You guys are incredible. Keep up the good work, everyone. Take care of yourselves.
$30 from Anonymous. Greetings from the cold and wet Netherlands. Great games, great charity. Can't wait for the Dark Souls 2 run. It can't get any better than two people, one controller. May the run be grossly incandescent. Considering that Ogunem and I have literally not even practiced that run yet, I'm sure it'll go great. I can't imagine anything <laughs> would go wrong. Just gaming god things? Hashtag just Dark gaming Souls. god things. No big deal. All right, so coming up here is a very, very important part of the run. Uh, you have to make a choice between bird and cage, and your choice determines what uh, Elizabeth wears on her necklace for the rest of the run. Uh, fortunately for speedrunning, both choices take exactly the same amount of time, so I usually just leave the choice up to a vote in my chat, but since I'm here with all these fine people, we get to do a live vote. So I'm excited. We'll be doing that in a bit. Also, did you really change the loading screen text to get Hillrunner's hat? Yes, I did. You're a genius. Thank you. I know. There's a couple other little things changed here and there. Just keep an eye out. Yeah, all the subtitles and objective text and everything is just stored in plain text files, so they're actually pretty easy to edit. $50 from Snidramon. I've been watching Ferret run this for a long time and still can't be bothered to figure out what's going on in most places. But hey, it's always good to see the gaming god in action. $50 from Mizeo the Killer. Is it someone new? This is my first time donating to a very awesome charity. The Bioshock franchise is my favorite of all time and needed to send some funds its way. Thanks for hosting this fantastic event. All right, it is time to vote. We're gonna vote by a show of hands. First bird, then cage. And my commentary crew will help me along. All right, so raise your hand if you vote for bird. Wrong choice. Raise your hand if you vote for cage. Wow. I don't have to count. Right. Yes, the winner. Wins. You're, you're guys are, you guys are correct. That's, that's the right choice. Cage is objectively the best. Unfortunately, when I got my world record, it had bird, which is a mistake I would love to rectify. We have $60 from Paradox X76. I love GDQ. Thanks to everyone involved. Can't wait for the Super Metroid race. It's going to be fantastic. Oh, and disintegrate those animals. Mr. Duet, calm down. All right, so the choice is coming up here. The loot test is present Elizabeth with the uh, pendants, and then you help Elizabeth to make her choice. They're right there. But I'm going to be up here for now. Booker, catch. So there they are. There they go. I'm That's glad good. their votes mattered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I actually didn't get that in my world record. So it's doubly sad that not only did I not pick Cage, I also had to make the choice in the first place. So Elizabeth just takes both along with her. She, she equips them as brass knuckles. Unfortunately, that only persists until you leave this area, but she'll have them for the next five minutes or so. All right, All right. so this is the Hillrunner hat section. Fingers crossed. Yep. Uh, there's a particular gear that is very important for the speedrun. Unfortunately, it only appears about 3% of the time. So every time I look at one of these gears, there's about a 3% chance that it'll actually be what I need. So I'm planning to reset for it, because every time you restart checkpoint and look at them, it re-randomizes them. So basically, for world record attempts, you just start the game over and then grind out these two gears for about three minutes, and if you don't get in that time, you just reset and try there's again. Like, there's like a hundred, right? There's like over a hundred different gears? Yeah, there are a lot of gears, and I'm pretty sure Hillrunner set is one of the rarest ones. It's, it, it gives you essentially a speed boost, which is why it's required for parts of the speed run. So it used to not be like mandatory, but now it's like you have to have it. Probably. Yeah, for the purposes of this run, I've set up a practice save or a safety save. So if I don't get it within the next maybe like two resets, then I'm just going to continue with the run and load the save with Hillrunner's hat so we don't have to sit here for 20 minutes. A, a big thing in his chat is uh, guessing how long it's going to take for, for this to happen. Always vote high. If you vote too high, then I will just reset before I get there. So don't be too pessimistic about it. Uh, both my world record and uh, Henny K's run, which is the second place time, got Hillrunner's hat first try without having to reset. So trying to set a new world record in this is particularly difficult now that uh, most of the RNG went the right way for it. All right, this is going to be the last reset for it. I 
it's a little awkward to have to load the safety save, but unfortunately, it's like required for the speed run to go yeah. well. Yeah. So. Uh, I purposefully don't catch Elizabeth's coin just yet because I can actually use it to uh, reposition her in this next area to be inside a conversation trigger. And she also uses the uh, necklace things as a yo-yo. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get her to spawn in the right place, so I have to wait a little bit. There we go. Uh, there's actually a small skip you can do here where you clip over this gate by getting yourself stuck in geometry right here and then spamming space a bunch to jump. But it's actually like really difficult to do and doesn't uh, save time unless you get it like second try or so. So I don't tend to go for it all that often. It's a lot easier if you bind uh, jump to scroll wheel though. But I'm too used to having scroll wheel just be switch weapons. Uh, we've been searching for ways to bypass this area for a while. We figured out ways to get out of bounds, but not ways to get back in bounds. So this is one of the areas that we're still trying to find a skip for. This is one of the, the forced fights in the game, so. Stay where you are. Or at least in the speed run. There are other places that you're forced to fight things, but you skip that. So here's where I get the shotgun, which I'll be using as my main weapon for quite a while yet. On easy mode, it kills basically all enemies in just one shot, unless they're Fireman or Crow, in which case it takes only three or four, maybe. So it is definitely the most powerful of the game weapon for the run. I have not yet loaded the safety save because this game works on a checkpoint save system. So it only saves permanent saves somewhat infrequently. So when I go through the door at the end of this gondola, right, I'll load that safety save. But for now, Elizabeth still has the uh, necklace pendants in her hands. What did you think was what a science star? Do you understand the expense? We have fifty dollars from anonymous doctors. Catch. You think people like that are just going to let you walk away? Okay, catch. You are an investment, and you will not be safe until you are far away from here. What do they want from me? We have five hundred dollars from Arjuriochi. Take my money. If you don't draw first. I have no idea why Elizabeth just repositioned. That's sort of strange. You're bleeding. Come here. <sighs> what happened back there? Five dollars from Hudson one four five. The runner that got me into speedrunning is playing the first and only game I know how to run. I guess it's a good time for a first donation. Thank you. All right, so up here I'm going to be loading the uh, safety save. Uh, for Hillrunner's Hat. What Hillrunner's Hat does is whenever your armor breaks, okay, so this save starts at uh, the other side of that gate, and if I actually go through the gate, it'll just override the save. So I'm gonna load this game and I'll be on the other side of the gate. Uh, what Hillrunner's Hat does is it gives you a 50% speed boost for five seconds every time your, let's find it. Your shield is uh, damaged to yeah. full, I think. Yeah, every time your shield breaks, and there's the animation where you're, there's the yellow shield stuff that breaks on your screen, uh, you get that speed boost, and you can know that you have the speed boost by the speed streaks on the screen as well. So when he was mentioning earlier why it's a detriment to have more shield, that's essentially why, because you want that to deplete quicker. Yeah, the less shield you have, the easier it is to break it, and I just want to break it very frequently. And the volley gun is a very good gun for doing that, because it deals very little health damage, but is still able to break all of your shield in two shots. So you'll so, see him shooting at the ground a lot, so he like moves faster. Yep. That'll start in the Hall of Heroes, where there are some pretty cool death warps. Uh, in this area, there is a skip that was found pretty recently by Real Link, who finds a lot of skips and is amazing at finding stuff for this game. Uh, it's FPS dependent again, so the higher frame rate is, the easier it goes. So first, we're going to head over to the carousel. So on the back side of a building up here, there is a wall that pushes you up if you uh, walk into it. There's an invisible wall that prevents you from going directly to it, but you can circle around it by jumping around here. And then you just look up and spam spacebar, and you go up somewhat slowly, but you get up there eventually. So theoretically, if you could get a uh, shock jockey early, you could 
skip, I think, this, but I don't think there's any way to, no one's actually found a way to skip this, like, the sequence of getting it, so. Yeah, this is one of the very few points in the game where you're forced to go somewhere else and then backtrack back to your original area and to be able to progress past that because of something you did in that other place you went to. So this is definitely one of the areas we would love to skip past. So by doing that, I can jump on those roofs and jump out of bounds, and we just load into the area that the next elevator was supposed to take you to. So he's skipping, well, you're not picking up any figure anyway, but if he were to pick that one up, that would have caused a cutscene, I think. Yep. All right, so this fight is one of the more well choreographed fights in the game. We kill these guys in a certain order, causes enemies to spawn here. You can kill them all in a row. My health is actually really low, so thank you, Elizabeth. It's one of the very few times that she actually gave me exactly what I needed right when I needed it. All right. So I actually want the turret to shoot me to give me that speed boost, but he's not going to do it. I think there's this enemy left. There we go. You don't actually need to kill the turret, but you need to kill all the other enemies because you can only pull that lever once you're out of combat. And I also need to pick up uh, Murder of Crows right now, which is way over here because the crow's in a strange spot. And that's just another example of picking it up after the scripted time that you pick it up. So there's yeah, that scene. You're supposed to pick it up the first time you fight that crow where I did the fire traps. And if you pick it up there, there's a 20 second cutscene. But every other crow also drops it, and none of the others cause that cutscene. Here I'll be switching out my machine gun for an RPG, which I'm going to be using for basically the rest of the run. Do you actually use all of the vigors over the course of the run? We use, yeah, we use all but two. We don't use the bullet reflecting one, and we don't use undertow, but we use all the rest in the speed run, some more than others. And here I'm damaging myself both for the speed boost and to set up a death warp later on. Yeah. And here I would like Elizabeth to teleport behind me so that she's in position to read this sign. It's really finicky, though. Whenever you look away from Elizabeth, she's liable to teleport wherever she wants out of sight, but she insisted on just running up this time. She's like magic. She's a magical girl. She's a quantum mechanic little girl. Same thing. F fine, take the science answer. <laughs> it's the answer for everything in this game. I see you're caught up in some kind of jam here. If you could see fit to let us through to where they keep the shock jockey. We have $50 from the Ferret King. Donating, donating to my namesake. Ferrets rule. War dancer way to victory, fearful ferret. My wife is vegan. Save the animals. Yay. Yay. There's another mandatory fight, but it's pretty short. It's over. <laughs> that was a nice fight. That went pretty well. Yeah, I'd say so. Sometimes the last guy isn't in the shotgun blast, but this time he decided to be nice. And here's where you pick up Bucking Bronco to skip the animation. Unfortunately, that right there just had a health kit, which I didn't look for before I picked it up. But I think I can still set up the suicide in a reasonable time. All right, so that takes my health down, which gives me a temporary invincibility shield, which should wear off about now. Uh, and by death warping through this door, I respawn on the other side. Your dead body can uh, go through a lot of objects, including doors. And your respawn is determined by where your body ends up and not where it starts. So by doing a death warp through that door, I get to respawn on the other side of it. I need to spawn, run back there to get those soldiers to spawn because I need them to open that door for me. If they don't spawn, then that door just never opens and you soft lock. The, the death war or the death warping thing is essentially your body doesn't have a hitbox when it's dead. I think is the explanation I've heard. Something like that. So coming up here is a skip that requires hill runners hat to do. It's actually pretty tricky, so I'm going to concentrate for a bit. We got it. Nice. I hit the trigger. <laughs> that is that is really difficult to actually do that. So it's it's great to see you got it. Yeah, you have to jump at a very specific time because the trigger. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the trigger that you need to hit is a very long distance behind the door. And without the hill runner's hat boost, it's impossible to hit it. So you need to get the hill runner's hat boost. And the way health works in this game is whenever you get down to zero health, uh, you instead get an invincibility shield that keeps you alive at one health. And that persists for maybe three or four seconds. And the boost from hill runner's hat only lasts for five seconds. So you need to start running 
and shoot the rocket to do the death warp at that very small interval while you don't have that invincibility shield, but you still have the speed boost from the warp. And you need to do it very close to the door and start the jump right as you get to the door or else you don't go far enough. So that is pretty tricky. And this is the one time that you pick up a Vigor and actually do get the animation. This Vigor is the subject of an entire slate-based quest, which we just skipped basically all of. And also, the, the, the choice he makes is, the, is actually faster to, to, to do that choice. Yeah, so killing Slate is slower, so uh, choose life. For a lot of dialogues, including the one that pops up there, which is the tutorial dialogue for Shock Jockey, there's a very, very small window where you can press enter to skip it, and it just never pops up in the first place. I've gotten that a couple times, and it saves me like a second each of even that. So basically, whenever you pick something that would cause a pop-up, you just mash on enter and hope it skips. I cannot hear Zimbabwe. Can you I'm hear here. me? I can hear Zach. Hello? So Zim, I'm sorry if you've been talking. Can you hear me? From background, but not through the headphones. Ah. Also, my game audio is kind of loud, but I don't know if that's something you can adjust. So here's a bit of an auto-scroller. You have to wait for these uh, supply crate things to move off the skylines before they activate and you're actually able to hop on them. But you can cut it halfway and just jump down here. It saves a little bit of a skyline ride. So you're, we're gonna miss, you're gonna miss a lot, a lot of the mechanical explanations because of the speed run. So like that's the first time you, you pass a tear, which we'll, he'll use in the auto-scroller section, essentially. But if, you're, if you've never played this, you could essentially like summon in units or ammo or stuff from other dimensions. And you'll see him actually make use of that somewhat. But not an extremely important part to know about. Yeah, it's not used as part of any glitches or sequence breaks, so I basically don't care about it. It's not fast. I don't think I understand how you can do what you do. So this is essentially like an auto an auto scroller fight. You have to wait for the uh, the tram to come, and you can kill you can kill the enemies as fast as you can, but then you still have to wait for the. Yep, the now that I've pulled that lever, that gondola way up there is going to start moving very, very slowly. So I have a bunch of time to waste. There are a few ways of enemies that come in, and you do need to make sure to kill all of them. So the speedrun strat in this part is just to fight in such a way that the enemies will always consistently come to you so that you don't have to chase them around everywhere, because they can run away from you and use the skylines to really make your life miserable. Let's see if you get a good gear here. I usually don't even check it. Melee strike range increased by three times. Considering melee is terrible, let's not bother. So now the bar just start coming in with some rocket enemies. They're pretty easy to dispatch of. A lot of the uh, lower health enemy, or the more difficult higher health enemies, I just deal with by using Bucking Bronco and then knocking off the edge of the world and they fall off. Because you can, you can like auto kill enemies if you, you strike them from an air, from a sky hook, but you can't do that with like, uh, stronger enemies. So it's like an auto kill, so it's really efficient at dealing with strong enemies. So that's yep. why he's doing it. So he's gone. Goodbye, cruel world. All right, so now there are going to be two waves of five enemies each. And if you just stand in this area, they'll all come to you and you won't have to worry about chasing them all over the place but you do want to count them to make sure that they all come to you. I'll come in on the sky hooks. This is like the pick them off as they come to you strategy. Yep. It's the most consistent way to get them all to end up in the same place. I feel like there's a guy somewhere. There they are. Booker, catch. Him. Come back. Oh, there it is. I'm not good at clicking heads like you, okay? I'll teach you, it's okay. <laughs> Alright, so this starts the second wave of five enemies.
That went well. Look at all this pile of bodies. All right, so the last enemy in this area is going to be a motorized patriot that spawns on this gondola. And he basically just spawned, so it's impossible to kill him any earlier. Stop shooting. Now the gondola is almost here. It has an invisible platform that extends a little bit beyond what you can visually see, so you can jump a bit earlier than you think you can. And it also has that enemy which you okay. took care of. Yep. It's done. When I uh, activated Elizabeth to open that lock, I was looking towards the door, and I wanted to do that so that she would uh, spawn behind me as I activated the lock. If she's ever in your view, she won't teleport around. So if she's in your view as you uh, order her to lockpick that door, she'll wait for the gondola to dock before opening it. And I can lose quite a bit of time for no reason whatsoever. She's Schrodinger's girl. And here I'm setting up another death warp. Uh, you can get off this gondola without actually docking and having the door open by uh, death warping and respawning at the platform that you actually arrive at. So I want to set it up, and then I wait for a visual cue where uh, this bar right here is about at the halfway point between that light and that railing. And then Elizabeth respawns you on the dock that you're moving towards, and you can still see the gondola coming up to it. You were on that. I was. No, I'm not. Quantum mechanics, baby. Angry Booker. Like they call you the false shepherd. And you the lamb. Let's not call each other that. Suits me. How do you figure they'd know so you? So coming up on the longest cutscene in the game. The or the bathroom cutscene. also wrote the signs. Got me. Hey, it's that wrench from that game. That was a good game. All right. I enjoyed it. Paris. I want to see you. Everything. It's up to you now. There's no one. Wait. What is that? 40 north by 74 west. That's not Paris, that's New York. How'd you know that? One thing I had in that tower was... Hey, we got about two minutes for comments. Time to study things like geography. I owed money. Fifty dollars from Spawned. Greetings from Finland. Let's hope we can send doctors outside of borders in the same manner our runners do. Everything's gonna be okay. Will you just turn around and talk to me and we can... Fifty dollars from all... Our lettuce. Donated, donates, donated, will donate. While the amount may vary, it'll always be consistent to support a great cause. Try not to break too many barriers in the quantum field, though, would you? You might start a reaction that could lead towards the unsavory deaths of some far-flung extra, extraterrestrial animals. Thank you, Robert. $15 from Big Sis 25 Good luck with your Bioshock Infinite run. I love this game. Glad it is being run. Vote Cage. That ship, I think, is uh, sailed by now. The correct answer won. That's true. You, if you wanted Cage, you, you got it, maybe. $50 from Talsaraz. First time attending a GDQ. I'm always blown away by both the skills of the runners and how awesome the speedrunning community is, especially when it comes to charity. Hi, it's Daisy. We'll see her once more? Yeah, during the, when she's behind the glass, right? Yep. And that is also the only time we see or speak to Fink. Pretty much the entire Fink Daisy storyline is skipped in this run. You never get her guns, you never do all that weird quantum stuff. We never go through any of those tears that is supposed to destabilize the world. I think you're de destabilizing the game pretty well, so. I, I do enough to break it. And the box shall give her to you. But first, you must help the box. Like to take this time to thank our sponsor, Humble Bundle. Pun Humble Bundle offers pay what you want bundles that support charity. 
It offers video games for mobile, ebooks, comics, and the Humble Store. Humble Bundle has raised over $61 million for charities such as Doctors Without Borders and many more. You can go to their website at www.humblebundle.com. All right, so now we've made it to the Finkton Docks. Uh, Are you a worker bee? Be the bee, the bee. Unfortunately, we recently found a way to skip the entire Fink thing where he does the bee the bee speech, which is the worst part of that skip, but we'll make it do. So coming up here is a section where you're supposed to chase Elizabeth, but uh, you can get, you can catch up. Elizabeth starts chasing you. Pretty much. There's actually a way to skip past the store, but I'm pretty bad at it, and if you mess it up once, then it just loses time, so I'm not going to bother. I think it's the most recent skip found. The only, the only reason you can be faster than her is because of Hillrunner's hat. Yeah, you can do a lot of things. Well, she decided to run into a barrel there, so I didn't actually need it. So she's behind me, and now she's in front. And then she skips a little bit. There's quite a bit in this game that the developers did not think about that you could just run 50% faster with, so. There are a number of strange things. Come up here is another fight, and during this fight I'm gonna pick up the volley gun, which is gonna be my main way of setting up death warps and speed boosts. And also my main weapon, because it's actually a very good way of dealing with enemies, so it'll replace my shotgun. Yeah, it's like a, it's a pointed shotgun, so it's like, it's really strong. Uh, there is another enemy over here, but I'm not sure where he went. This is another forced fight in the game where you have to deal with the enemies before you can open the door. Yep, here I'm picking up health infusion mostly just to refill my health. So I have more for death warps and speed boosts. So the uh, camera lock is a terrible thing. This enemy is a dude with a volley gun, and it's actually possible that uh, the volley gun falls off the barge after you kill him. So I have to be very careful to make sure it doesn't. And my record, it actually did fall off, and I had to d stay with the shotgun for another 10 minutes or so. But fortunately, we got it here. There's still one more enemy somewhere, and I'm not sure. Oh, two. Interesting. There we go. And you can open the door. Yep. The enemies all congregate around this door at the end of the fight, so you don't have to walk around hunting. You just wait for them to come to you. We have time for some donations. $20 from Rogue League. Hey, Ferret, I told you I would be watching. Bioshock Infinite was the first speedrun I ever saw, and I've been hooked ever since. At any rate, all hail Fearful Ferret, the gaming god. Thank you. Greetings from Kyoto. I get to watch this at four in the afternoon, Ferret. Watched you for the first time on YouTube a week ago. Really enjoyed it and, and am really enjoying watching you live for the first time. Even more happy to support DWB. Donating to kill all animals and make Argo float in SOTC. That was thirty dollars from Alex B. And where will we get these weapons? From one of our many friends and allies? A gunsmith in Finkton should be a walk in the park. What do you say, partners? You're a liar, Mr. Dewitt, and a thug. But you're also my only means of reaching Paris. She has quite a thing for Paris. She really does. She eventually gets there. So here I'm going to pick up a damage upgrade for the volley gun, which both helps with uh, killing enemies and also speed boosts. So volley gun is just by far the best weapon in this game. And usually I use a rocket to kill these two enemies, but I'm out of ammo, so we'll do it that way. There's some enemies that spawn up here during this next fight, and you can set up a fire trap to uh, kill some of them. If I had enough salts, I'd set up two, and that would pretty much guarantee to kill all of them, but unfortunately I didn't have enough salts, because I used too many in the last fight. Here I'm going to pick up some more RPG ammo, because I need to use it to set up a death warp pretty soon. And I also want to be getting my health lower in this area. 
You should probably take some of her health. She, you're really low on it. I'll pass. So here's one of the enemies that didn't quite die from that fire trap. Unfortunately, there is yet another. There. So there I jumped before I pressed the button because usually Elizabeth throwing you stuff will uh, override activating stuff like elevator buttons, but if you're in the air, then she will not throw you whatever it is and you can still activate the button. So once she starts her dialogue here, I can do the suicide. Unfortunately, it's been too long since I got my health low, so I had an invincibility shield there for a little bit, but it didn't take too much time to wear off. And doing this uh, causes the elevator to appear instantly instead of having to wait for it because there's an elevator that starts moving once she starts that dialogue. And for some reason, I didn't have an invincibility shield there. A lot of things with uh, death warps in this game are actually kind of tough to do because it's not always clear when the death warp will actually work based on how much health you have because of the way the invincibility shield works. It doesn't seem to be entirely consistent. So I messed up there. Then here I do a death warp out of the back of this elevator. And this skips a, a long elevator ride. Yeah, this skips the B the B speech. And that ends me up up here. The clock is there, the elevator shaft is like back there. And now I can just strafe around to this roof. And we skip the entire part about the gunsmith and Finkton and all that. And we just jump to the area that the Vox Populi take you to afterwards. This bridge here. It used to be like a lot harder skip in Finkton, but that skips it and it's more easy, I guess, to, to do. Yeah, it's much less effort. So here is the one thing that they actually did patch out. Uh, it's possible to jump on the top of this thing right here using the skyline, but they patched that out. Fortunately, it's actually faster just to do this method where you death warp through that gate, and since your body is on the other side of the gate, that's where you respawn. And again, I'm shooting the ground below myself every time my armor comes back to maintain that 50% speed boost. He's really aggressive about pushing those elevator buttons. He really is. I mean, it says push. How can you resist? I mean, it, it doesn't say push. punch. Yeah. Same thing. Time for some donations. We have $50 from MadX16. Greetings from Italy. It's 9 a.m. and I'm starting the day studying very hard. Bioshock Infinite is my favorite of all time, and you are just awesome. Thank you for what you're doing for charity. Hey, it's incredible to see 90,000 viewers in every period of the day. They're just right for each other, aren't they? Who? It's Roy and Comstock. I wonder how many people are watching you play Bioshock Infinite. More than ever have before, I dare say. I certainly would wager that. Mr. Lin, my God, I, I was so set on getting to Paris. I, I didn't really think that... You couldn't have known this would happen. I had a role in this catastrophe. If, if you want to pretend that we're purely innocents in this, then that's your problem. I'd like to take this time to thank the Yeti, another one of our sponsors. The Yeti is today's tea for your torso. Supporting Games Done Quick events with tea since 2012. $3 from every $11 tea is donated to Doctors Without Borders. Special thanks to the, some of the amazing artists who donated their amazing talents. Special thanks to artists Mark, Carrie, Cassie, Tanya, Logan, Drew, Tiffany, and Nina for donating their artwork. Coming up here is the factory fight. It's another mandatory fight in the game, and it's the first and only time that you have to fight a handyman. Fortunately, you get a crank gun for the handyman, so he's not too tough to deal with. It's fights like this that make easy difficulty much, much easier than the others. This is by far one of the most difficult fights if you try 1999 mode. Got a lock, On easy difficulty, fights are more about predicting enemy spawns and knowing in what order to kill them, and not so much accuracy or anything silly like that. I know we mentioned like how, how difficult 1999 mode is. You want to go into like why it's why it's difficult or I mean everything kills you in about three hits. Like the strat for this area, particularly for killing the handyman, is you stand next to the vending machine and every half second you activate it and buy more health because you're taking damage so dang fast. Oh, 
First step for this is just killing all the enemies on this barge. Blocking Bronco makes enemies vulnerable, so you can deal damage to them a lot faster. So it only takes two volley gun shots to kill that fireman, where it would otherwise take maybe four or five. Here I'm going to grab this crank gun, because I'm going to use it to take out the handyman a bit later. I'm also not going to grab salts from Elizabeth just yet, because I'm going to activate Elizabeth to throw me the salts after I've already started killing the handyman. Uh, one cool trick you can do with Elizabeth's throwing you stuff is that whenever you reload a weapon and grab something from Elizabeth, it skips to the end of the reload animation, so it just instantly completes, so I don't have to wait through the rest of the crank gun animation. And Murder of Crows is used there to stun the handyman, because it's the uh, only weapon in the game that actually stuns him. There's still one more enemy, and I'm not quite sure where he is. He might be up on this barge. Yep. Okay. Hi, it's Daisy. For the second time. What does that one do? Uh, I didn't realize that was there, and I didn't mean to pick it up. And since I don't have any other boot to replace it with, I'm stuck with it. It was tunnel vision. Tunnel. Right, well, start aiming down your sights, bud. It's literally the worst gear in the game. Uh, whenever you aim down your sights, it increases damage by 25%. But whenever you fire from the hip, it decreases your damage by 25%. So it's basically just a damage nerf. Unless you aim down your sights. So we are now playing on hard mode. It's really not that big of a deal. I'm pretty sure volley gun shots still kill most enemies in just one hit. So it'll mostly just matter for killing uh, motorized patriots during the final fight and such like that. Most of the difficult parts of this run is just glitches and such and doesn't really have anything to do with damage, so it's not that big of a deal. Rude. That's just rude. Rude as. Time for donations. I'd like to take this time to thank Tiny Build, another one of our sponsors. Tiny Build is an indie developer and publisher. Indie Tiny Build is known for games like Speedrunners, Divide by Sheep, and Lovely Planet. Just Lovely Tiny Build just released No Time to Explain on Steam and Xbox One, supporting and working with indie developers from around the world. You can follow them on Twitter at TinyBuild. So the moment of truth between us. New York or Paris? Either. Both. Like apparently just those two levers manipulate everything on this airship. There are the master controls. $55 from Anonymous. Ferret, catch! Booker. Much obliged. Cash. Booker, we've got to stop them. No, that's the E. No, that is certainly it. No, it's not. The E is. is, is, is stop e. it! Thirty dollars from Anonymous. Stop it, you Loving this SGDQ so far. Heart. There it is. You've done it, Nobbins. He's coming back. He's coming back. The notes were correct. The instrument was not. One needs both to get his. Fifty dollars from Anthony184. You guys are always exciting to watch, and I'm happy to donate to a good cause. Here's to seeing some Dark to Souls 2 jolly cooperation. Praise the sun. So 
Comstock uses these songs. Are there others we can use? Something to keep the bird off our back? Perhaps you should ask the maestro himself. So where is he? They left the piano? Of course. Well, at least they left the piano. So coming up here is a fight that you're supposed to do, but it's possible to just skip around the trigger. Yeah, you, you basically uh, jump on a rail, around a railing and you skip the trigger for the event and you just get just this nice stroll through the park. Yep. So you're supposed to walk across that bridge to my left, but by just running around here, nobody shows up. And there's things you can summon, but why, why bother? Exactly. Could you take a look at this lock? What is it about that song that brings in the bird? Unfortunately, I'm running low on volley gun ammo, so I'm going to do a small backup strat where I buy some more here. And here you just have to wait for the gondola to arrive so you can loot stuff in the meantime. There would be a fight here, but there isn't, so... I worked out. You don't think anyone can really see the future, do you? I saw some kids when I first got here. Three. It was New York, but larger than any New York I ever saw. It was burning. Booker, catch. Where is she? Oh. Essentially, you can't come in, or you can't have her do lock picking when you're in a fight, and you can't open doors when you're in fights for the most part. So that's why you have to do some of these forced fights. I just realized who those two are. They, well, at least she invented the technology that allows the city to flow. Giant balloons. Quantum particles suspended in space time at a fixed height. I'd like to take this time to thank Twitch, another one of our sponsors. SGDQ 2015 is streamed entirely through Twitch. 100% of all subscription revenue goes straight to MSF. Twitch is the biggest live video broadcasting platform and community for gamers. I was going to have told you they come? No. The subjunctive? That's not the subjunctive. I don't think this impact has been invented. It would have had to have been. Had to have been. Had to have been. I doubt it. They seem to want to help. They seem to be out of their minds. Oh. The fact that we sometimes finish each other's sentences. Exactly. It would be odder if we didn't. <laughs> we have ten dollars from Ricardo. I know it ain't much, but I'd love to do er, give anything I have to this awesome community and to the cause. Also, Bioshock is awesome. Shout out to my great and best friends watching with me. Ruas, Ian, Rodrigo, and Katuba. So we're going to be doing another death warp coming up here. And the purpose of this death warp is a bit different than most of the other ones. Uh, here I'm going to be buying Possession, Charge, Possession Aid, and Devil's Kiss Boost. Devil's Kiss Boost just increases its damage to help me with some fights later on. And Possession is going to be used once uh, at the final fight to help kill an enemy a little bit faster. And Charge is going to be useful for a few skips and just some general optimization because charging the enemies is pretty fast. It's a bit of a slow setup here. So right now I'm in combat, so Elizabeth will not pick this lock. But if I death warp to the other side of the gate. If you did that. Other side, other. The other side of the gate. The, dang it. So that's just, uh, my health got low later than I wanted it to, so it was unclear when my invincibility shield would wear off. So I wasn't really sure when it would be appropriate to jump towards the gate. So I tried it too early, and then too early, and then my shield wore off, and they got the better of me. So hopefully it'll work this time. There, there we go. go. The other side of the gate. There we go. So this spawns you right next to the gate, and you're not in combat immediately when you respawn until something puts you back into it. So you hide behind this pillar so the enemies on the other side of this don't see you, and you remain out of combat long enough for her to pick the lock. Can you open this? It's 
simple dual dial lock. My book said most fools keep a combination no more than 20 feet away. Let's hope we find one of those fools. This might be it. Why are you so keen on lock picking? $30 from Fantastic Mr. Socks. Booker, punch. The elevator button. I'd never watched many first-person shooter runs before, so this is a bit of a new experience. I'm having a lot of fun. Keep up the good work. Oh, and let's see some jolly cooperation. Twice the players means half the deaths, right? I'm sure it works exactly like that. Where have I seen that combination before? I can't quite remember. We have $100 from Anonymous. Love Bioshock, love GDQ. Keep up the great work. Elizabeth. Elizabeth, you promise me I will stop. I'd like to take this time to thank Power Up Audio, another one of our sponsors. Power Up Audio is an indie sound studio from Vancouver, Canada. They've worked on such games as Crypt of the Necrodancer and Bunker Punks. Power Up Audio is here at SGDQ donating their time and they're doing sound tech for the event 24-7. So right here is the one thing that Zimbabwe managed to contribute to this run and he found this skip about 10 months before it was actually useful. Uh, the skip is where you jump from there over that gate to uh, get out of this area early. It's pretty tricky to do because the uh, clip rush for the gate extends quite a ways above it. So you have to get into it at a pretty specific angle. Nice. But it worked out. Hooray. It's tough to do. Everyone clap. Woo. Thanks, friends. Yeah, unfortunately, when I found that, you were stuck in combat and the game was soft locked. So, go me, I guess? Yeah, now I'm stuck in combat for basically forever. Even if you exit to the main menu, the combat music will still play. So, you literally cannot escape. Fortunately, the way we found to skip this bit up here does not require you to be out of combat where before it did. The so, skip. all is well. V skip. All right, so this is CompStock gate skip. It was found about two months before we found a way to make it actually consistent, and it is basically the biggest skip in the game. So right here, I'm going to run along a specific path up to this gate, and then I did not reload my rocket launcher. So we're going to try that again. So yeah, this is a huge skip. We're going to run through there, which resets my respawn location, and we're going to do that again. All right. So running through this path uh, forces my respawn location to be set behind the gate right where my body is landing right now. And there are basically two respawn points in this game. One is this location where you go to if you die. And the other is the respawn location that you go to whenever you fall off the map. So if I were to fall off the edge of this here, I would respawn back on the ground. And now I have to play the floor as lava so that that respawn location does not reset and then fall off the map close to where that location was set, and we respawn behind that gate and go to Comstock House. So shout-outs to Stoic Squirrel for actually finding that skip, which was a ridiculous skip that we were looking for for months on end. Yeah, it and saves, like, a two, two gigantic fights and, like, a huge amount of backtracking. Yeah, even speed running through that area takes about 15 minutes, so that skip saves maybe 13 or 14. And then Real Link found the uh, consistent way to get it which is by setting the respawn point that way. We found lots of other ways where you would uh, clip out of bounds and go to the Bank of the Prophet, only you're on the roof of it out of bounds because you can jump onto it if you go out of bounds from that area. And it was just a pain trying to jump at all possible walls and death warp and all sorts of places, just finding ways to get to the other side of that gate. So that skip was a pretty big deal and completely obsoleted everybody's PV when it was found. Stop! Stop it! Stop it! 
We have $10 from Anonymous. Greetings from San Antonio, Texas. Just played through Infinite a few weeks ago and loved it. Thanks for playing th through it and for a great cause. Remember, constants and variables. So I made a note through Elizabeth saying that I would not let them take her back about five minutes ago. I'm not very good at keeping promises. Elizabeth! So here you don't actually have to wait for the bridge to go down. The uh, hitbox for the bridge is just completely horizontal. So even with the speed boost, you can't actually fall into the nether around here. The nether, isn't that like another game? Uh, I suppose it is. We'll get to that in five days. I have to be kind of careful with my health in this area because I do want to do a lot of speed boosts, but I'm going to have to set up a death warp later on, and I also have to run through enemies before then, so I want to make sure that my health doesn't get low enough that an unintended death would occur. So here we skip all of Comstock House by just charging to this turret. That was Comstock House. Hooray. Aside nice from the first floor. It is, it is quite a... Uh, I wouldn't say nice. It's kind of creepy. That also skips all the triggers to make the enemies spawn in these rooms, so you just run through them without any trouble. Because the enemies in this area suck. Yeah, this is basically supposed to be a stealth section. I don't bother with that. to get spooked. Should be able to head that to resolution, though? That enemy is a lot scarier when you don't actually come across any until that moment. So here's a skip found pretty recently by Mollusk Ma. Who's here in the audience? I actually only have one rocket left, so I have to be a bit careful with it to make absolutely sure that the death warp actually works. All right, we're good. So when you respawn here, you respawn down where the elevator arrives. Only the elevator hasn't actually got there yet. It's still, still coming down. So you can come to this area earlier than you should be able to. You have to wait for the loot tests to spawn there, or else if you pass by those stairs too early, then this conversation will never start and you softlock the game. But since the uh, death warp took so long to set up, they, there wasn't a problem with that. And we have time for some donations. Who's that? I wonder. We have $20 from Leon Fenrir. Ferret, it's dangerous to... Whoops, wrong game. Take my money and trash cake. It took all I had left in me just to bring you here. Uh, Elizabeth, I, I don't understand. I heard you screaming. I was, I was coming to get you. Are we here? Take my hand. Fuck her, catch. Too soon. So Elizabeth has an interesting hitbox, which it's possible to get on top of by just walking into her. It doesn't actually save time, but it's kind of fun to do since you just have to wait for her to stop talking anyway. Nice. Stay up there. It's easy to get up there, it's hard to stay up there. He always stops. I got a little bit up. What is the cage? It's for her. She'll know how to read it. Old Lizzie knows to pick the cage. What's it say? It's advice. 
my son what? How not to become me. I'm back. So that last death war both uh, saved some time by getting to the retest dialogue a bit faster. And it also uh, brought me back up to about two thirds health, where normally at the end of that area you'd be at close to zero health. So that allows you to do a speed boost through here without having to worry about dying to these enemies. And this guy is actually clipping into me, so Pretty unfortunately, I have to kill him. He wasn't even attacking you. Even worse from a speedrunning perspective, he was stopping me from moving. So after you pull this lever, you become invincible and are no longer able to take damage after a short delay. So every time the screen shakes, the same as in uh, Monument Tower with Songbird, you slow down. But if you jump right before the shake, then you don't slow down because you only slow down if you're touching the ground. But you have to jump right before the screen shakes. And it shakes at difficult to predict times, so jumping through there is pretty tricky. Shake, shake. And now we free Elizabeth from the Matrix. You ready? Just do it. There is no spoon. Subtitles are fun. Help me with this. Someone meant for you to have this. What is it? Just read it. A dream of New York happens. I'd like to thank, take this time to thank World Nine Gaming. World Nine Gaming is the premier computer and console gaming provider for events across the Midwest since 2005. Dedicated staff, tournament expertise, and expensive, expensive collection of games and consoles. Will9 Gaming gives the best gaming experience at the lowest cost for all events, large and small. For information on booking, check will9gaming.com. You forget. I know you. I'm not going to let you kill him. Really? Booker? What are you going to do to stop me? Not a damn thing. Smash. Everything here is a cipher that I understand except for this symbol. It's a cage. Did she say anything about this? No. So coming up right here is another death warp. Surprise, surprise. Uh, by doing death warp at this lockpick, as Elizabeth begins her animation, it skips uh, her dialogue as she opens the door because she's needed for this cutscene where she uh, wakes you up. So she just skips to the end of the lock picking and you don't have to wait for her to finish. There's another fight here. And at the end of it, a barge comes in that you uh, commandeer. It was actually pretty tough to make the barge spawn. Sometimes it would just not spawn for extended periods of time and we weren't quite sure why. But Real Link figured out a consistent way of making it appear, so shout outs to him. He's done a lot for this game. And I just remembered that I have tunnel vision, so I should be doing this. Oh, right. It actually works pretty well. Good gear is bad. Pretty sure that's not the phrase. Close enough. He's got a quick scope, I think. I mean, tunnel vision matters so little just because you don't do all that much fighting that I didn't even realize I had it until right now. So it's really not a big deal. That ammo is a nice thing to have, though. Uh, where's the last guy? I don't, Booker, catch. I don't want your salts right now. So Too I bad, guess, catch them. I guess you could call me salty.
We have $20 from Dr. Agon. So excited to be watching my first live GDQ and happy to support a great event for a great cause. I was thrilled to hear BI was being run. It's one of my favorites. I run it myself in a whooping time of about, oh, four hours. Good luck with the rest of the run, Ferret. Will the record be unbroken? I don't think so. Save the animals. The record in this game is very difficult to break because of the uh, Horner side RNG and just because there's so many other parts of the run that are difficult to get consistent. The game also has a number of self locks that can occur with enemies spawning in the wrong place and there's some tricky setups to just break out of those soft locks, but they're not all that common and so far I haven't run into any today. So that's always nice. And here there's a series of barges that come up and you have to defeat the enemies on them. But for the most part it goes by pretty quickly. Although the volley gun is not the best for taking out those mosquitoes. We have $50 from Max34. It's pretty easy to get addicted to watching these amazing speedruns. Before I can even get a hold of what just happened, Ferret does another awesome trick. Thanks for keeping up the great commentary and skill. Go GDQ. Just gaming god things. few combat uses of uh, Shock Jockey. Yeah, it's useful against uh, pretty much just motorized patriots and mosquitoes because those are the mechanical enemies that you have to face. Uh, the enemies up on this barge won't jump down until you come up to them, so sometimes I just forget that they're there. Which is my own dang fault. All right, so that's the end of the sequence. So now Comstock's land ship actually spawns properly, and we head up to it. And this is going to be the last area of the game up until we get to the epilogue. And there are some fun tricks you can do along here. We found some ways to get on this roof up here and further up, but unfortunately, we haven't found any way to make that useful just yet. There's still quite a few areas that we think is possible to get past, and we have some ways to get out of bounds and mess around with, but we haven't actually found ways to make it useful for the run. But this game is ripe with so many areas that just have skips that are just a hair's breadth away, and we need to make that one last jump. I mean, since this game got accepted to AGDQ, there was a, a lot of interest around finding more glitches in it, and we've shaved maybe like seven or eight minutes off the record in just the past two months. So we've made a lot of progress recently. And by we, I mean other people, because I don't really do all that much glitch hunting, but major shout-outs to uh, Stoic Squirrel and Relink, who have done the brunt of the work on that end. They are half the reason I'm able to do the things I'm doing today. So now I'm trading out the volley gun for the hand cannon, which I'm going to be using for most of the last fight. Uh, the hand cannon is a bit superior for killing just normal enemies because it too just kills in one hit, but it's just a gun instead of a volley gun, so it's a lot easier to aim. And it also reloads a bit faster. Don't forget to zoom in. Exactly. Uh, Zim, I need you to do that one timer thing. I turned my phone off. Uh, look at the run timer or something. I have a watch. That works. That works. It was 24 seconds? Yeah, 24. Cool. So you're unable to go on the next uh, line of skylines until the motorized patriots are done being moved off of them. And I'm going to use a, a timing cue based on a line of dialogue. 
So tunnel vision now actually matters because the uh, hand cannon is no longer one hit kill with a body shot. So I'm gonna have to aim down sights a bit more than I'm used to. All right, start the timer now. Okay. 24? Uh, tell me when it's 20. Actually, tell me when it's 24. Okay. Twenty-four. All right. And Skyline just cleared. Thank you, Zach. You're welcome. Sorry, I failed you, Ferret. I think having your phone off is probably a good thing, all things considered. All right. So now we're going to set up for Prophet's Cabin skip, which is a pretty fun skip, which involves getting to the final fight area earlier than I should. And this enemy is not letting me charge to him for some reason. Oh well. This is going to be yet another death warp, so I want to get my health a bit lower. Now this one is actually pretty difficult to set up, so I need a bit of serious time. So this skyline appears once you jump down on that floor down there, and there's a door down there that you're supposed to go into, but I'm actually going to be opening that door from the wrong side. So if you head down here, you can clip inside uh, Comstock's main cabin a bit earlier than you should be able to. And then here's the door that you're supposed to go into to uh, start this whole business, but if I activate it and then shoot myself at, right after I activate it, all right, I messed it up, but I get another chance at it because Elizabeth respawns you in this room. Uh, what you need to do is you need to do the death warp as you're in the air after you activate the door, and it's pretty dang tricky to get the timing down. Unfortunately, due to some randomness in the way that the RPG damage works, I wasn't able to get the suicide off in just five rockets, so unfortunately I can't actually do it. Wait, she was on the other side of the door. She was, and so was I. This is my tower. So the objective with that glitch was to uh, respawn inside the door opening animation of this door, and that for some reason changes your character's properties so that you are able to walk through doors and characters like Elizabeth. But unfortunately, I didn't quite get it, and it would take a long time to set Maybe it up again. So we'll have to save that for another day. The actual time-saving part of that isn't until later, because there's a door that you need Elizabeth to lockpick. But if you get that glitch right, then you can just run through it without having to wait for Elizabeth to finish her dialogue and become available for lockpicking. Stand back. I'm ending this. Booker, no. This is between me and him into a trap. I need to do this. So because I did the whole business with clipping into this area early, the uh, blood particle from when you smash Comstock's head into the thing, spoilers, appears a bit earlier than it should. And that lighting glitch happens, and he also already has his head wound. So he's basically a zombie. Look at you, child. You're hey, let go of her. Elizabeth, everything I've done, I've done to keep you safe. From what? The seed of the prophet shall sit the throne and drown in flame the mountains of man. I'd like to take this time to thank Capcom, another one of our sponsors. The Mega Man Legacy Collection is a six in games in one. It has Mega Man 1 through Mega Man 6. Redone in HD finish with the retro 8-bit style. The Mega Man Legacy Collection is available on the PS4, the Xbox One, and PC. It's coming this summer, and 3DS will be coming winter. The price will be $14.99, and it will include new challenge mode that remixes levels from the first six games to give a new type of challenge to fans. This mode has leaderboards. She's your daughter, you son of a bitch! And you abandoned her! Was it worth it? Huh? Did you get what you wanted? Booker. Tell me! Booker. Tell me! It is finished. Nothing is finished. Booker. You lock her up for her whole life. Booker. You cut off her finger and you put it on me. Booker, you... stop it! You killed him. Oh no. Gasp. What did he need? You tell me, what did he mean about my finger? I don't know. I, 
Yeah. I've been able to get that glitch off, and I can just run through this door right now and activate the uh, bridge immediately. But unfortunately, I missed it, so we have to wait for Elizabeth to wander up here. And this is the part where if you activate the bridge during that nosebleed animation, the game just locks. You too. You just can't remember. No. I'll prove it to you. So now we wait. We'll destroy the siphon. The answer's behind one of your doors. You just have to open it. Destroy the siphon? It's the entire tower, Booker. How are we going to do that? I don't know. We'll think of something on the way. I'd like to take this time to thank Alienware, Wear, another one of our sponsors. Alienware is the leader in PC gaming hardware since 1996. Alienware is available online and in stores in over 23 countries globally. Alienware is now streaming live gameplay and interviews every week on Twitch. You can see the weekly schedule or learn more about them at www.alienware.com. She makes a nice platform. She does. Uh, we actually used to use the fact that you bounce off Elizabeth's head to do a much, much more difficult version of the factory skip back in Finkton. It was very difficult. So we're coming up on the final fight here. Uh, it's basically just, uh, I think, seven waves of enemies that you have to kill in sequence. And figuring out how to do it quickly is actually very difficult because they all have different triggers for how they start and how many enemies appear. So we had to figure out which enemies to kill, in what order to kill them, and even how quickly to kill them to prevent more from appearing and to make sure that each wave smoothly goes to the next. Uh, it's definitely the most difficult combat portion of the run, and it's really one of my favorite portions because there's so many parts to it. Go. Go, go, go. We're going to start off with what is basically a Hail Mary shot. There's a rocket enemy on this barge, and since I have got possession aid, uh, enemies that I hit with possession will uh, do a death warp after the possession timer runs out. So now, after a short delay, that guy will fire a rocket at his feet and will do a death warp. Unfortunately, he's not me, so it won't work out too well for him. Now these two barges spawn, I'm going to use Songbird to take out that barge as I kill the enemies on this one. On the barge. And this thing spawns and starts shooting off. But a few shots, it's gone. We fill some salts. And now enemies spawn on this barge and another one, which is going to be to my right. That's the end of that. So now the next wave is going to start. First thing I need to destroy is actually the Zeppelin coming up here. I'm going to use Songbird to take care of that. Because Songbird's uh, timer has come back since I used him to kill that second barge. Songbird has a pretty long timer or a delay during which you can't resummon him. So we space those out so that they all come when we need it. Uh, the tricky thing about this fight is that you actually need to kill the last motorized Patriot um, after killing all the rest of the grunts. And the reason behind that is that if you kill the last Patriot while one of the grunts is still alive, then a second wave of grunts will spawn. So I need to take out those before we finish off the Patriot. And I want to take out these two turrets so that they're not there at the end of the fight because otherwise you have to wait for them to fly off the map and despawn. Getting down sights is difficult. Now one thing that some people missed with this game is you can actually just jump on these Zeppelins and destroy their engines from the inside. And there's still two more Zeppelins I need to destroy, so I use Songbird to take care of one, and I do this to take care of the other. But you want Songbird to take care of these because this is like the, the longest thing to do. I'm also going to take this opportunity to grab the volley gun once more. Call him in. Okay. I 
think I'm unable to order Songbird 2 Attack Mode Zeppelin because uh, Elizabeth's throw health thing overrode it. So I had to accept the health before I was able to target Songbird. And this wave is the last wave, and it works similarly to the other one with motorized Patriots, where if the Patriots are destroyed before all the grunts are dead, then you have to deal with an extra wave of enemies. That includes this thing up here. Which is very difficult to hit with the volley gun, but we did it. I'm gonna make absolutely sure that all the other grunts are gone. Alright, looks good. And hopefully that will be the end of the fight. Appreciate it. Yep. Alright. Sometimes this statue can take a very long time to spawn in, but fortunately decided to just do it right away. Uh, where is Elizabeth? Okay. Elizabeth likes to take her sweet time getting places. She'll make it. Booker, come here. What? What is it? Look, you can use the songbird to bring the whole damn thing down. Destroy the siphon. And that's what you want. It's the only way we'll we have fifty dollars from Simo the Mammoth. Keep up the great work. Loving it so far. Tear it down. Tear it all down. We have fifty dollars from Daniel Thirty. Just started watching speedruns this year. As a video game artist, I love seeing games I've worked on completely destroyed. Plus, it's for charity. On a side note, I hear I hear they now play Pokemon Blindfold. How about Bioshock? That would be rather difficult. I can't say no, though. Uh, the other main runner of this game, Henny K, has done runs with just one hand. Which is, I think, so far the only novelty run in this game people have done. Where is he? Unless you count 100%, which I probably would. What the is 100%? The only, the only difference with 100% is you collect all the Voxophones, because that's basically the only collectible in the game. Um, I haven't actually watched any runs, so I don't know if it's any good. I'm just assuming it's not any good. Rest in peace. Aww. Sad music. Now we're in Rapture. So we got to the end of pretty much all the main gameplay elements of this run. Uh, the final fight is the last bit, and then this is mostly just an 11 minute story area with epilogue-y stuff. So, let's see. Uh, I have to thank some of the guys that worked on this run. Uh, Stokes, Will, and Relink are the two guys that did a lot of glitch hunting. Uh, they don't really do runs, but they found a lot of out of bounds skips and sequence breaks and elevator skips, and they're absolutely instrument instrumental to what this run is. So, major thanks to them. Also, major thanks to Henny K. He is a German speedrunner, and he's my main competition for this game right now. I have the world record with a time of 1 hour 49 minutes and 7 seconds. And I was doing that run pretty much simultaneously with what turned out to be Henny's PB. And his time was 1 hour, 49 minutes, and 9 seconds. So we finished runs 2 minutes apart with PBs 2 seconds apart. And those are still the two fastest times of the game so far. And he's planning on doing some runs uh, pretty soon. So if you want to see more runs of this game, uh, I'm probably going to stop running it until my world record is beat. So watching more runs, you should go to twitch.tv slash hennyk. H-E-N-Y-K. He is a great runner. Thousands of doors. Opening all at once. Oh my god. They're beautiful. The stars. Have you ever managed to lose a run past this point? Not a good run. I've definitely run into soft locks and time wasters, but I don't think a world record pace run has been ruined by anything in the epilogue. Come on, it's this way. Come on. The epilogue is basically just follow the points and don't dilly-dally. We haven't found any strats that actually save time in this area, just stuff that loses time, so this is definitely one of the areas of the game that we would like to uh, accelerate a bit. Oh, 
this 11 minute section also has about three times as much story as the entire rest of the run. So if you came for the story, here's that part. Did you give us an explanation of the story? Oh, goodness. Quantum mechanics and stuff. So I guess we have time. Uh, there are two major timelines. Um, I'm going to spoil what is about to happen in like the next 10 minutes, so don't worry about it. Uh, there are two major timelines. The breaking point is when uh, Booker DeWitt chooses to either accept or refuse a baptism, which is uh, after the Battle of Wounded Knee in which he participated. Uh, in the timeline where he accepts the baptism, he becomes Booker DeWitt. He runs up some gambling debts. He has a daughter. I wonder who that might be. And that he runs up debts and eventually accepts a deal to get out of his debt, which will become clear a bit later. In the other timeline, he refuses the bap... Oh, wait. He accepts it. Yeah, refusing the baptism results in Booker DeWitt. Accepting the baptism results in him taking on the new name of Zachary Comstock. Oh, no. So Zachary Comstock is actually you from a different timeline. And that Comstock teams up with Rosalind Lutess, who creates quantum technology that allows you to peek into alternate universes. And Robert Lutess is just an alternate universe version of Rosalind Lutess. And they work together. Um, by looking into various tears and such, Comstock is able to pilfer technology from other timelines. And by looking at Rapture, uh, Fink figured out how to make Songbird and such like that. So similarities between the games is basically explained by Comstock was able to see Rapture and copy stuff from it. And then Comstock eventually wants to have a child, but all the quantum mechanics stuff that he was messing with uh, rendered him infertile. So his solution for that is to reach over into the Booker timeline and offer Booker a deal to trade Elizabeth, or Anna DeWitt, uh, to pay off Booker's debts. And Booker accepts, which he later comes to regret. And the tattoo on his right hand of AD is meant to symbolize his sorrow at trading off his daughter to pay off his debts. And then Rosalind Lutess and Robert Lutess feel bad about helping out Comstock because they see that everything turned out poorly. So their way of fixing everything is to basically start off the events of this game by bringing Booker into the Columbia timeline and offering him to bring us the girl and wipe away the debt, which is meant sort of as a double meaning where Booker rescues Elizabeth back so instead of paying off his debts by selling Elizabeth, he's able to recover Elizabeth and sort of pay off his bigger debt that he garnered by making that deal. And it also pays off what Rosalind and Robert think are debts by helping to fix the timeline and preventing Zachary Comstock from ever coming about, and thus preventing Robert and Rosalind from helping him in his dastardly plans. And I think that's the entire story. I think it's rather well told. I quite enjoyed this game. Enough to play it, I don't know how many hundreds of times now. We have $50 from Anonymous. Hey guys, I've been up late watching the stream with our new dog, Mario, who we're still housebreaking. I needed to get him to fall asleep again, and Ferret's Bioshock Infinite Run just did the trick. Nope. All joking aside, though, you guys are doing an amazing service to the world, and I haven't been able to peel my eyes off this run. Here's $50 towards Sunshine Hoverless. Booker, you don't leave this room until you do. Do it. Time is running short. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. Go ahead. No. You can wait as long as you want. Eventually, you'll give him what he wants. And now, as is tradition, we shake the baby. See all the doors. And what's behind all the doors. And behind one of them, I see him. Comstock. What choice do I have? The debt's paid. Mr. Comstock washes you of all your sins. Bring us the girl and wipe away the debt. There was no baby. The deal was I go to Columbia to get you. Booker, they bleed it. Oh. Remember, 
I'd like to take this time to thank the Humble Bundle, another one of our sponsors. Humble Bundle offers pay-what-you-want bundles that support charity. Humble Bundle offers bundles for video games, mobile, ebooks, comics, and the Humble Store. Humble Bundle has raised over $61 million for charity, such as Doctors Without Borders and many more. You can go to www.humblebundle.com to take a look at them. No, he is alive in a million, million worlds. It's not over because the prophet is dead. It will only be over when he never even lived in the first place. Hey. Hey, the deal is off, you hear me? Unstable. The deal is off. It's Give her fine. back. Hurry. Give her back. Fine, are you mad? Give her back, you son of a bitch. It's ready. Go. No. No, no, Shut no. Shut down no. the machine. No. Shut it down. Anna. Shut down Anna. the machine. Now do it. Give me back my daughter. No. I'd like to take this time to thank the Yeti, another one of our sponsors. The Yeti, today's tea for your torso. The Yeti is supporting Games Done Quick events with tea sin since 2012. $3 from every $11 tea is donated to Doctors Without Borders. Special thanks to the art amazing artists who donated their amazing talents. Special thanks to artists Mark, Carrie, Cassie, Tanya, Logan, Drew, Tiffany, and Nina for donating their artwork. All right, time is going to be in about another minute or so. I told you it was. We already know it works. The question is, will he? Do you suppose he branded himself as some sort of penance? Hmm, sure. That's your point. What's done is done. What's done will be done. I suppose the brand is his hair shirt, as he is ours. He's starting to put his story together. You're quite fond of this theory of yours. He's manufacturing new memories from his old ones. Well, the brain adapts. I should know. I live it. Look at her wake up. Look at her wake up. This is where it started. I saw you. I saw you. To your credit, you did try to weasel out of the deal. This is all Comstock's fault. If I went back, killed him before he did any of this. Things get set in motion. How would one know how far back to go? That's the only way to do it. Go back to when he was born, and I'll smother the son of a bitch in his crib. It's going to be time when I open the door to the lighthouse. Let's hear it for Fear of Fear, the gaming god. Alright, thanks so much for watching. This completes the Bioshock trilogy at GDQ Games, so I'm very glad this got in and I was able to show it off. Of course it is, I remember. And now the very moving ending. Who are you? You chose to walk away, but in other oceans? didn't you took the baptism you were born again as a different man it all has to end to have never started not just in this world but in all of ours smother him in the crib smother 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 before the choice book or catch before you are reborn and what name can you take my son he's Zachary Comstock he's Booker DeWitt no All right, thanks for watching.